Hey, it's Stacy J and today is Sunday. Welcome to my studio. I want to talk to you about the fern bird. The fern bird. Whether it be the dress or the top, I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to do a very simple um, sew along. Mainly because I'm new at this, so my sew alongs usually include a human sitting beside me. So I'm going to sew along because Sometimes when you look at a pattern, you have a tendency to overthink it or you miss a step or something just doesn't seem right and something that could be easily avoided is now consuming you and you feel um, that the fern bird becomes a dodo. So this is a fern, <laughs> this is a fern bird dress. Okay, um, I'm gonna, I've just cut out, I've just cut it out, I've cut out a size 20 and I've cut out the v-neck because I like v-necks, I prefer v-neck on me and I, um, this is from the Sewing Revival and they're a Nelson company, okay, and um, Janine is the lovely designer of this actual dress. Right, so I am going to sew it along and do it. I, yesterday I picked up some fabric. I don't think I told you guys. I might have kept that one a secret. I didn't. I just forgot to show you guys. But I got some mandolins. I think they're mandolins. I was calling them mandolins all day, and I still obviously am calling them mandolins. Is that a mandolin? Mum said guitars. I said, that's not a guitar, Mum. There is another word for that. So the other word we're using is a mandolin. Okay, so I've cut out the back. Okay, it's made out of a gorgeous lawn. I wish our lawn out the back looked as gorgeous. Um, I am going to get those dogs. That is the front. Okay, that's a v neck, as I said. And I have cut out the frill that goes around the sleeves. I cut that out in a different direction to what the um, actual other mandolins are going as. And I've done the interfacing for the v neck. And interfacing for the back neck. Now, the interfacing I use, I'm not a, um, what's the word, proficient? I'm not, I've not studied interfacing. I just know what I like and I like what I know. So I use a woven, a woven interfacing. I have for many, many, many a year. There are different um, um, thicknesses to the woven. Um, it usually depends on what I'm making and how um, stiff I want it. I do not use that compressed, um, like like if I was liking it toward MDF um, interfacing, because I don't like it on there. I, I, I use that for bags because um, it gives the bag structure. So imagine if you're using it for bags and it gives a bag structure, what it's going to do to um, possibly your facings and your, or your collar. If I want it to be a little bit stiffer in the collar, I do one on each side of my collar. Okay, that stiffens it up that little bit more. But it, then again, it has to go on the fabric you've got because you don't want, unless you're dressing up, you don't want a collar to be stuck like this and you can't move it in this big floaty dress, okay? So what I do first, this is this is the most important thing, I think, when doing um, just doing, just when you're doing. Okay, so I'm going to take the front, uh, the back, sorry, i got the back here in front of me. i got the back in front of me here. I am just looking for any notches. No, no notches. So I'm just going to take this off. Or the pins out, sorry. I'm using the inside because I could not tell the difference between the two. I'm using the inside of my fold because it's cut on the fold. Oh, what is that? I must have gone. So Mum's just come over for a cup of tea. She's got some wee boxes. She went to Mitre 10 and um, bought some little boxes so she could put... Um, stuff from the pantry and she was up at the dumb o'clock this morning and she couldn't sleep so she started packing some more stuff that's what you do when you can't sleep you go and do something productive productive because that way 
you don't think you just laid there going hmm, hmm, hmm. okay so i've cut that out oh, sorry i have unpinned that and like i said the inside is going to be the right side so i'm going to open it up i'm going to i'm just going to make sure that that looks that blue looks oh no that looks a bit okay so the outside's going to be the outside Okay, so I'm just going to lay the, the inside down, uh, the right side down. Okay, and I'll bring you over here. And this is what I do. And I do it on neckline. Sorry, guys. I Mr. Christopher has got to set up something so I can do more with you guys like this All right so the sick so up here is my neckline okay so this is the inside of my shirt I'm just getting the right stuff out Ooh. okay here it is All right it always says to you what well, says to you to um stay stitch the neckline i could i could i could stay stitch the neckline sorry you're not going to see my face which is okay because you know what i look like i um I haven't stay stitched anything for quite some time. I get a tiny bit of this. Well, you can use your own interfacing, but I actually have this um, product I got many, many years ago. And obviously, this is how it turned out because it's so fine. I'll sh actually bring it up to you guys. And I just go around the neckline. Now, I don't, I don't iron it. I just put it on, okay? So that it does not move, it does not alter, it does not stretch. Because when you're there on those curves and on that very tender part of the neckline, it is so easy to stretch. And that's another reason why I don't like to um, why I don't like to stay stitch. Because there's still the possibility, especially with something as fine as what I'm using right now. I mean, you got an okay chance if you're doing something like wool or or a denim or something like that. Okay, right. So that's that's that this that that's that's done. See inside this, you'll see the little lines. Okay, see the little lines. Now I can't pull that. I can't break that. Sorry. So that's what it's doing. It's literally sewing itself on there. What's well, glued? But you know what I mean. It's sitting in there. <laughs> you know what I mean. So it's. <laughs> Mum will laugh at that. Um, so it's sitting on there, and it's the stay stitch. And that, I know, and this is one of the first things I do, is I stay the stay stitch. Okay, I will cut into that later when I put the face in there on and blah, 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 making it fit. But, and then, you know what else it does? It lets me know which is the uh, right side and the wrong side instantly. So I am going to unpin this. This is the front, and this is even more dangerous to get all stretched out. Okay. I don't know if you've ever made like a wrap dress or something like that. And it, it buckles out. Well, it buckles out because when you're sewing it, you are actually, you do, the foot has pressure. The, the um, dog teeth have pressure on there. Um, and it does pull that very delicate edging, especially with a V-neck because it's, it's cut on the bias. You know, and the bias, what do we know about bias? Bias is the is the um is the cross grain. So it's the cross cross the grain, the warps and the wets. Um and that is where you cut your bias to go around circles because it will take that stretch. Okay, so like I said, the inside is the wrong side, so I'm going to lay that down. Very gently. I know. I actually sometimes I think I'm a, doing it a little bit too, too gentle in life. But I just, you know, and and this, this V neck, with the sewing revival fern bird, um, it just sits perfectly. I I love it. I um, sorry. I'm just gonna have to untangle this. Bear with. Bear with. Oh, we don't want that bit. Put that over there. Never know what we might need that for. Um. Oh, here's another little little trick for young players. Um, when you're 
you've got your interfacing and you've bought like a couple of meters of it, always make sure that you fold it neatly, neatly back up when you put it away. Because if you don't, unlike fabric, just making sure it's on the right side. This is uh, sticky, so it's um, iron on. Unlike fabric, you can't iron interface to make it straight, can you? Because it's got one side is sticky. And you don't really want to do that. So again, I'm not doing anything but placing it down. Look at that. Just sits beautifully. I then cut. I'll do a little, like, little bit length there. And then I'll go up the other side. It might seem pedantic, but um, when you're pulling at your neckline and trying to hide your girls because your girls have fallen out because your neckline's been stretched, you'll be thanking me for learning how to do it. You know, I'm not talking down to anyone or anything like that, but I'm just telling you how I do it. Okay. And so my v is safe so now i feel comfortable playing with this fabric okay i feel very comfortable playing with it i can move it around i can pin it to oops i'm stuck to the table i can pin it to the back it's translucent eh i'll wear a singlet under it i usually do wear singlets under everything I did wear a singlet under my blue top yesterday right so that's where we're at with that so that's the first thing I need you to go off and do. I'll just um, pop that back now. Sorry. Okay. So that's what I do first. I'm going to now pin the shoulder to the shoulders. I will. Um, tip you up so you can see a little bit more. You don't need to see my face, do you? Right. Oh, I was going to put an earpiece in so you guys can see. I need you guys to tell me if you can hear me properly. Um, I had someone tell me that I was hard to hear, whereas I think when I hear myself, I'm it's like bouncing off the walls. Um, and so I am, where am I? There we go. Okay, it's right sides to right sides at the shoulder seams. I am going to stand by cooler. I just want to check if I'm opening up the seams. <clears throat> um, press seams open, yes. I'm going to go and overlock. I'm going to go and overlock this. See, that's what happens. I just be quiet, don't I? I'm going to go and overlock this now. I've got white on the overlocker, so no fancy thread pulling, changing things. I was going to sew in white. I did think of sewing in pink. There's no real top stitching. There's lots of under stitching, so I might just sew in white. I have white on my, sh I have white beside the other cone on my machine. See, look, white, white right there, and my overlock has got white. Okay, it'll be all white. It'll be all white. I'm gonna go and overlock this. I'll be back. Okay. Right. I um stopped overlocking because silly me i had forgot to mark the dart and um i forgot to mark the dart on the, in the front and i like to sew the dart first because i do like to <coughs> overlock the dart in position makes it sound like a plane I'm just using a heat erasable pen. I bought these heat erasable pens and I gave some to mum and she just looked at me when she'd used them and she goes, where have they been all my life? And I said, I know, you can have chalk and things like that. And, and I do use chalk. I use chalk when I, um, when I do the hemming of pants. Um, but this stuff is pretty awesome. You just got to be careful. Don't go and put black on something white and, you know, um, because you can lose it. You can actually do a line, a mark. Um, I think it eventually comes out, but, you know, 
if you're doing something you're making something for somebody you don't want them to have that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put the white thread on um, this is the wrong side that's fantastic so i'm just going to join in my my little darts and i am going to do you guys do this i get my 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 marks my two marks that i've made i put the pin through it so it sort of goes each side on the first one it sort of groups it and gathers it into place for the rest and i then just put my needle through my pin sorry not my needle and i want to change my needle on my machine i want to get a smaller needle a 10 because i have been hemming pants we all know what hemming pants can do to a needle okay and before that i was doing something fine with it but that was okay because it was quite new now first one's there and then into there and that lines up the rest of the dart that's how i do it it kind of lines it up nicely especially if you marked it correctly i don't I've got to stop whispering. If you guys can't hear me, I can't whisper. I just don't want Chris to hear me. <laughs> He's watching. Always watching. Right, so I've got my pins in place. So I'm just going to go and get my... <laughs> Oi! <sighs> I'm going to go. It's a beautiful day out today. It would have been really good if that was yesterday. Um, I am going to commit to rain on mum's moving day. I'm going to go and get a new needle. I'm going to tell those dogs that they're naughty. And I am going to put my washing in the dryer. And I am going to change my needle, change the cotton, make it white and get back to you. I'll be there. Okay, so um, you know what? I'll be so fast you won't even see that I've gone. Right, I've done none of that. I've just walked over to my sewing machine and found my mum's mobile phone. So, mum, I'm coming over to bring you your mobile phone. Just saying. Oh, and I've just had an answer from somebody. We've got pre-settlement inspection at 12 o'clock on Monday. Woohoo! Everyone, can you just... just Speak to whoever you speak to and say, let there not be rain here on Wednesday and Tuesday, please, next week. Anyway, I've got to go and drop this phone to my mum. I'll be back. Honey, I'm home. Okay, just went and dropped off the phone to mum. She, um, she thought I'd come over because... <laughs> I've raced over to her a few times since Dad passed away. Um, she had a phone that needed to be recalled from Noah. That's how old the phone was. It was over 10 years old, had never been upgraded during its lifespan with my mother. She didn't believe that it needed to be. Um, and um, yes, so I went over there and she's like, oh my gosh, Stacey's been ringing me and has no answer. So she's freaking out and came over. No, no, no. Stacey can't ring you because your phone's on my on my um, sewing machine. And um and I'm here to give you your phone. And funnily enough, somebody who tried to ring her yesterday <laughs> rang her while I was there and I answered. That was a good friend of mine as well. Um, Lynn, I think I've spoken about her. Um, yeah, so <laughs> Lynn rang and said, where have you been? <laughs> I've been trying to get hold of you for a couple of days. Well, maybe yesterday we spent six hours at a material shop. Because I'm going to get let this little dog out and then I'm going to come back. Where was I up to? I was up to um, doing my darts on the front of my um, top. And then I'm going to go around and I'm going to overlock all the edges. And I'm not going to overlock the, um, as it's one piece in the arm, I'm not going to overlock where the frill comes into it because I'll actually overlock the frill and the sleeve together when I get to that part. But everything else is open seamed. So I would like to... I would like to um, just do my darts and then overlock and then I will we'll be back, okay? Okie dokie. So I have done all of the um, um, overlocking. Now, if you don't have an overlocker machine, there are other ways to stop the fraying of the fabric. One is to zigzag close to the edge. Some machines, some sewing machines have an overlocking 
thread um, a so have an overlocking ability. Okay, I've had an overlocker for a quazillion years, and um, so I actually don't know the overlocking thread thingo that is can be on your sewing machine. The other way, um, and I wouldn't do it on this fabric because it's too sheer. Um, the other way is to do um, Hong Kong seams, which is, um, I think Hong Kong seams are very sexy. Um, I don't know why. Please don't question me on that, of why I think it is, but I think they are. Now, I haven't actually cut and trimmed off all my overlocking. So it's going to come to a seam soon where they get overlocked together, especially down the sleeve. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just attaching the shoulders together, the front and the back together, right sides together. I'm attaching those. Um, another way to do your seams could be um, Frenchy seams, um, where you tuck it inside itself. Um, or um, tell your partner that um, it's an awesome excuse for you to go and get an overlocker. Christmas is coming up. I just had the Black Friday sales on. I think they're still on. Um, and so I just, now I'm sticking more pins in than I normally would. Um, maybe because it's lovely soft fabric. I'm actually really looking forward to wearing this. So, um, right. So far, one shoulder's done. <laughs> I definitely will have to wear a singlet under this, which means I need to buy some new singlets. Um, not only will it keep me warm, but I'm too old to have um, <coughs> my color bra showing through it. It's bad enough when it falls off my shoulder. Especially with the top I'm wearing now, not the cardi I've got on, of course, but the top. Uh, just, uh, I, um, mum's got the sold sign up outside her, um, house, and I want the kids to go back and do, um, a stand in front of it like they did nine years ago when, well, um, 2015, five. Eight years ago when they moved down so I'm actually trying to get them together to rally together all at their fathers at the moment rally together it's a beautiful day out and think they should go down and get the photo taken so my eldest Xander has just contacted me like you guys care sorry about that um, right so I'm gonna go and do the shoulder seams now and they, um, I just want to confirm what the pattern says. Because if you guys are reading the pattern, I want to make sure we're doing the same thing. Right now, they've actually overlocked, searched the sides. Yep, stitch up the shoulders. That's what we want to do. And once we get there, we'll go on to the neck bands. See you in a jiff. Back at my ironing board. Now, I'm a stickler for ironing. Um, I'm going to sneeze. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm a stickler for ironing. In between jobs okay because it makes your garments sit better and I don't mean good old press I mean you know let's get the seams open the seams are open everything sits flatter sits nicer and I'm not doing too much pressure pressure I've got an awesome steam iron I dropped it the other day and it did have a little hissy fit at me but then it sort of didn't so um Yes, so I'm opening the shoulder seams because the next thing we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to attach the facing. Okay. Now, one of the highest points of why we did the neckline with the stay tape around it was that so the neckline didn't move. We got to go and iron the interfacing on to the facing, <laughs> interfacing onto the facing and um then we're going to attach it okay so sometimes this is where it can be a downfall where you lose what it's trying to tell you okay so 
then I do both sides. I take it. So I want to make sure that that seam does open. Okay, so it's sitting nice and open. So I'll take the iron on one side and just pull the fabric just that little bit more. Just that little bit because I want it to open up. Okay, it sets the seams and opens it nicely that it sits flat. Okay, that's that translucent. I can see the overlocking in between and the other side. Again, so I can do all this without having any fear of my neckline spreading because the first thing I did was so that so that um, stay stitch into it. Well, iron that stay stitch into it. I didn't sew a stay stitch into it. But if you don't have what I have, you can always get a um, cut off a thin bit of your interfacing. Because eventually, when you do curve, so uh, snip, snip into the curve of the um, neckline, you will inevitably trim it. Right, I'm just going over here one second. I am taking things off. Right, so I've got one side of this, one side of that. This is our V neck. Um, I will not overlock the seams of the v-neck. Uh, no, I won't. Will I? No, I won't. I'll let you know. Only because it's tucked inside itself, so it is actually, um, and I do a little stitch to hold the facing at the shoulder seams so that you don't... Um, find the word, Stacey Joanne, so that you don't... It doesn't flip out because a lot of people hate facings because it comes unfaced. It comes out faced. There you go. That's the word I'm going to use. Right. That's the wrong side. Look at this little thing. Again, we don't want to pull it. We don't want to stretch it. We just want it to be in its right self. All right. And I just do that just to make it lay flat. I can lay flat and correct. I get then I get my little V, find my little sticky side down. Oh, that's right, I didn't. <laughs> I was stealing. I was stealing the interfacing to not to make it sort of that I don't like wasting interfacing. Sometimes it's dearer than satin. I mean silk. I know what I'm saying. Keep up, guys. Keep up. Right, okay. I'm going to iron that down. Again, notice, please, I'm not ironing the fabric. And a lot of people say don't use steam. I always use steam when I'm doing it. Right, take it, roll it over. Make sure that glue settles this side. The side we will actually um, overlock is the edge of the facing, which is which is this side. Okay, so that's the side that's going to be touching the skin. This is going to be inside the seam. Now, speaking of inside seams, you know that you are to check each pattern. Most um, big four or big four, big five, whatever, however many they've they got big now, um, do 1.5 centimetre seam allowance. Well, a lot of indies don't. Now, the reason they don't is because you actually don't need that seam allowance. The um, It also takes up less fabric and all that. So double check before you go, before you go and, um, oh, cool. um, before you go and do your 1.5 centimeters allowance, if you've been a big four person all the time, check, please check. Make sure you're doing it right. Otherwise, you're going to be really, really upset because it'll be too small. Okay, because you're taking off an extra centimetre at each seam. Okay, so I'm going to go and overlock that. And you can come with me if you want. How about that? I'm good like that, aren't I? Right, I'm just going to... Oh, I keep getting caught on my, my drawers. My drawer handles. The top one doesn't have the little bit that rolls out because um, I knew that things would get caught on it. But Chris changed the um, 
change them for me so that I um, could. So what I'm going to, could, listen to me. So it could be nicer, nicer draw handles because the ones that came with that were, eh, naff. So I'm just going to overlock the outside. Now, don't forget, there's no pulling involved. There's dog teeth. Everything moves. It makes it happen, okay? That I am guiding. I am not pulling. I'm not pushing. I am guiding. And if it rolls out, I pick it up a little bit more. You don't, you don't, you just don't. I don't know what I'm saying here, but you just don't anyway, okay? So whatever I'm saying, pick a word, make a word, or do a sentence. And, um, yeah, so it's a nice. Don't forget... You can st still stretch this fabric out, so you don't want to do that. This hand is not doing anything, it's just helping the fabric guide through. not a race nobody is going to time you to say you know how fast or how slow you did it you just make sure that you do it to be what you need it to be i actually will overlock i don't know why i'm cutting that it's going to chop off in a second i will overlock the where the shoulder seams match okay and the other side Now we're going to do the shoulder seams on this one first. Second one. Oop, 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 oop. I want to mow the lawn today. It's a nice day, but it's been raining for two days and I'm not 100% sure how mushy the back lawn is going to be. I know how freaking grassy it is. The grass is really, really high on it. So, see, I, I don't want to twist it, but I am sort of just guiding it that little bit. And if you guys have cover stitch machines, that's exactly the same. Let the machine do the work. Okay not your job to help the machine well no it's not your job to help the machine there are times where I do put my hand behind the sewing machine and gently um, request the fabric come with me but yes okay so I'm going to go and pin these I'm not gonna pin them right here can I while you're there with me I'm gonna pin the at the shoulder seams to make my front and back neckline And the other one. Ah, oh, get out the way. I should trim that, eh? Because then we're going to go back to. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you should trim that. What? Trim what, Stacey? We're just looking down your top. Sorry, guys. And when I say guys, I mean people. So everything I do about mum, you know, and or if I'm talking about something or um, like talking to the remover, so I said, oh, well, we need this. And I and I always, and when I'm with mum, you know, and I'm talking about, okay, well, um, we need the money for this. Um, I mean, I always turn around and say, when I say me, uh, we, I said, I mean you. <laughs> but I just, it's just a little a gathering of, of, things you know so getting back to the um ironing board okay this is what um your ironing tools are for this is really really good this is really really good stacy if we can see it can you not see what i'm talking about oh goodness i think i'll just um, delete some of that there we go right this one's really really good it goes in sleeves it goes in armholes and it goes oh <laughs> 
Let's sew it first. Can't iron what I've not sewn. So my, I like it there. I actually quite like the sewing machine there. Do you guys like it there? Okay, so I'm on the one centimetre there. That's half a centimetre. That's one centimetre. Line it up. Yeah, back tack. I don't have this on automatic back tack. I like to be in control of my back tacking at the beginning. Even sometimes if I don't want the thread to come out at the end, I go back and back tack a little bit there. I did not run over those pins. And back tack there. So my thread where it's broken is actually broken, not at the seam. So it tucks inside itself. Just um, sometimes when you're doing something right on the edge and you want to back tack and you end up with threads coming off it, that's what I do. I go back inside itself so it doesn't, you can't see it. On my one centimetre seam allowance. Ah, Stacey Joy. Okay, right. Now, let's go and sew, open these little seams up and we're going to get to putting in the neckline. Yay. Oh. So, um, Chris has got to sort something out for me, eh? To, so I can do, it's, I think that's where I've, why I've stopped with the whole, um, mallard coat is because it's it's really hard to record and I want you guys to see what I'm doing and I know half of you are waiting for me to finish that and I'm really really sorry but that is one of the reasons so maybe this Christmas I can get some things locked in loaded so I can do that so that's nice and open that's nice and open there flip it open make sure there's no um no little bubble ups in it okay so just one more press there and another press there beautiful okay so this should match up completely and totally and utterly utterly i do i do it don't i it's all my d's I, I all my t's i make them into d's right so first thing i do is i stick my v in the v because we know that's where the v is actually what i'll do is I'm going to fold it in half. Don't even need to fold it in half. Stand by, Paula. Let's do this. Line up my little V. There's my V and my V. The top and the and the point of my Vs. I'm left-handed. Just thought I'd share that with you. Okay, and like I said, it's a one centimetre seam allowance. This... Who cares if it takes you that little bit longer to do this and, and nobody really knows you're doing it, but it's nice to have that little, hey, where do I turn, okay? And this will give you your point perfectly in the right place. She says and hopes it works. Right, and there you go. So when you get to there, you should turn. All right. So now what I'm going to do is, is lay my right sides together. Put it just put it around the actual neckline grab the v with the v that's fantastic put your little pin in go up to the shoulder seams because that's your next one now I like junctions and I like my junctions to work properly. Uh, the time that I will recommend anyone sew over a pin and it's not at great knots or great speeds, it's when you come to a junction. And a junction is when two seams meet and I put the, the pin through the one side, it's not in the groove, and I try and find the seam on the other side so I can I've got it through the seam there, and I've got it through the seam on the top, right? And then I want to find the seam at the top of this. So this is all within the seam allowance. This is why I like to iron, and then I put it through the seam allowance. 
uh, in through the seam stitching there. I go to the other side. Let's do it again. I'll show you again. I put it through the seam the stitches. You can hear it. Listen. That's the stitches. Okay, I poke it through the seam, the seam itself. There we go. Get to the other seam. Open it up a little bit. I just give a little pull, you know, to open it up. And then I go through the top. And then I go through the top of this. And it all should be around the seam allowance. Now, I will sew over those pins, but I'll do them very carefully. Now, center that in. It should match up beautifully. And it does. Put one there. Put it there. Put it there, mate. Another one here. See, I'm bilingual. I speak New Zealand and Australian. I speak a little bit of Pigeon English too. And here. Same for the V. You just want to be very, very gentle again. You don't want any stretching of the actual um, neckline going on. Put a couple in here. be good put a couple on the other side it's just all sits on it sits on top of it okay there is no real um i'm just going to trim that away because i want to make sure i get the right seam allowance and i've gone and i was a little bit rough with my cutting out of my interfacing plus i found this interfacing is actually quite opened weaved so it sort of it sort of opens and stretches a bit when you're putting it on or cutting it out you have a cut out interfacing with a, a rotary cutter. I can't stand how it sticks to the board. And then you open it. It might be just this one because when I pull it, it just sort of, yeah, it does that whole annoyance thing. Okay, and I'll just trim that bit there because that's... There we go. That's nicer. Noiser. Okay, so my neckline is now pinned to the garment. Necklines to necklines, right sides facing. We're going to sew around the neckline at one centimetre seam allowance. Come with. Now, you can start in the V, but I normally start at a shoulder. So what I'll do is I'll start at the shoulder prior to the V. So the way I work, oops, there's a pin there. Okay, so I like to start at a shoulder seam. One centimeter seam allowance, remember? Like I said, that is the only time that I run over. I'm actually gonna run over, and over it at the end. So you know if you run over a pin and it hits your needle and it can actually put out your timing, which means that the bobbin doesn't connect properly when you are sewing. That's why you're not allowed to run over pins. All right. You'd been gentle also when you're pulling um, your neckline around. Okay, we're going to come up to the V. Making sure there's no fabric under there. There's nothing worse. All right, so I'm coming up to the V. We can see that I'm now going to run over that pink line. I'm going to take that out. 
I'll probably get about three more stitches. Make that two more stitches. Yep, two more stitches. I'm right on target. Turn it up. Turn it up. And turn it around. And by rights, I should land directly on the one centimeter. Look at that, following the pink line around again. Okay, who cares? Who cares if that's what you do? And if people say it's cheating, you know, it's not cheating. You know what it is? It's making your garment look really good. It's giving you a less time to unpick stuff because you've made it look really good. Okay, now we're coming up to the shoulder seam. You thought I weren't, so wasn't going to move that one, didn't you? Okay, so coming up, coming up. Don't forget the sh the, the facing does have have um, a shape to it. Okay, it's not a straight line. It's and the whole thing is actually curving around. Now remember how I said I'm going to sew over these. I'm not going to fly over them. I'm going to sew over them. I've got a little up and down. take that out I do it because it just I like it to match and um, I have been known to unpack about three or four times if I don't use a pin and it doesn't match when I was in the defense force um, when I was sewing for the defense force as well um, being ex-military it, it gave me a reason you know a pride of the uniform so I, I wasn't a civilian coming in going, yeah, who cares? Now, the rank on a naval officer and the rank on a Air Force officer both carry their rank and stripes around their sleeve. And at the seam of the of the jacket, one of the seams, because it was a um, two-part sleeve, um, you had to match the rank up. You had to make it all look like it was streamlined. And I was pretty bloody good at it because I did exactly that. I took it and did what I needed to do. I haven't ever stuffed up a machine. I don't say that, oh, no, I haven't popped. I haven't snapped a needle by doing it. I've snapped a needle by leaving a pin in there and sewing over it. But I have never snapped a needle by going over a junction. And I teach. That's how I teach it. Um, because I think that is my, that is my best way of doing it. There you go. I'm over that one. Now let's see how good I went with it all. Oh, Stacy, does it, can you see it? Seam, streamline then. Oh, that one's a bit naff, is it? I don't know, as well, okay? So, the big thing we've got now is we've got to flip it in this way and make it work. So, the first thing I do is I wanna, I wanna understitch that, okay? So it goes all the way under stitching and under stitching and top stitching are two different things. Top stitching comes on the side that you can actually see. Under stitching is the underneath where you don't see, okay? Just in case you didn't know. The other thing we're going to do is... Oh, that's not nice. Look at that. Okay, we undo that. That's for sure. That's definitely um, not cool for school, man. So I'm just going to unstitch around um, the V itself. I possibly won't stick pins in because at the end of the day, the stitching near it is classified as pins isn't it? That's why you can take a pin out before you stitch because you pretty much got a pin in it. Right, so that, that wasn't fun. No players like that game. Right, okay. So I'm going to go down again. This so time I'm going to make sure it's flat underneath because that was where I went wrong. Okay, up there on the pink. Get that out of the way. That's flat now. There, there, there. One, two, one more, and one more, and turn it. It's a bit better. Right. Here we go. 
See, it's all gone. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut down to the, the thread right there, okay? To it, not in it, not a... Okay, I'm concentrating because I just shut up. Right, so that's cut to it. So now when you go over, it splits like that. And you can flip it over and it sits like that. Not going to be ironing it, but yep, sit like that. Okay, so I'm going to go and... What am I going to do next? I think I might um, nick the necklines. Okay, so the next thing I do is go around here. This just helps anything that bunches up or anything that... Now don't forget, we don't need to worry too much about that. If you did a safety stitch... I keep thinking of that song, Safety Dance. Um, if you did a safety stitch... It's going to cut through it so mine is actually getting cut through too but don't forget you've got that other stitch that now holds the entire neckline in place okay and it shouldn't stretch out now that sorry that's how i do it i don't cut cut i put my th thumbnail over the stitch line and cut down basically to my thumbnail okay Oh, maybe it wants to come in. So we're done one front. Just a few around the back. You don't need too many around the back. It's quite an open round scoop neck back. Please make sure you stick your thumbnail over this. Because the last thing you want is to slice through your thingos. What's it called? Threads. Seam. I'm not used to using such big scissors. Here's my little yellow ones. Oh, there they are. Right. Alrighty, right. These are my favourite ones. They're the Kai scissors. And I bought them from the Thimbles and Thread just down here. They don't have them anymore. But I bought some Kai scissors online. That when my shop comes up and running, I'll be selling from my shop. Because these are my Kai scissors that I bought from the shop. They are nice and sharp. Okay, don't forget curves. Get rid of get rid of the fabric or split the fabric. Those are the two things you need to do inside curves. Concave versus um, convex. Okay, one you need to cut, one you need to remove. Okay, it's like trying to stick your foot in a you know, father's sock that's too big for you and then put your shoe on and hope for the best. Okay, if you want to get rid of the sock, you want to put one on that fit shoe. Okay. It's telling me my storage is full. I have over 200 gigabytes still left on my phone. So I'm going to get this done. You know how when you're running out of thread, you sew faster? <laughs> That's what I'm planning on doing. Okay, so I have trimmed and notched all my neckline. I am now going to go and um, iron it because, what did I say about ironing? It's important. Oh. All right. So I'm just going to do this nice and gently. I want it to go into the actual facing itself. Okay. So I should just do what I normally do. But I've just told you to iron everything. Right. So we want to press it into the facing. Okay, let's just stand up my glasses. Press it into the facing. Ah. Which I'm going to understitch this soon. Normally what I do is I just jump on the machine. Actually notch it at the machine and um, jump on the machine and understitch it. 
rather than torturing myself like this, trying to get it to sit nicely for me, because it sits really nicely when you understitch it. I'm just going to give it a bit of a hand and then we're going to go to the machine. Okay. Come, come with. Again, I started at a, sh at a seam. I don't know why I do it. I think it's because it could have sorts of hides in the seam, especially hemming pants. So I stick my foot on the seam, the, that part of my foot on the actual seam. It's nice and close. Back tack. I only have to do one little back tack because you're actually going to come back on top of it. Okay, you don't want to have too many bulky seams. And I just give it a little bit of a pull, pull that way to make sure my seams open up and that to me helps it roll and go underneath okay so here we are all gone around and that flips in and tucks in beautifully Okay, so I'll go back to the ironing board and press it down. Probably don't need to come with me for that. And that will sit gorgeously there. And I'll show you how I just do a little tack inside my um, seam that holds that down. I'll be back. So here it is. I've got the V-neck just done. Excuse my mannequin. She's a little bit smaller than I am. Okay, she's a lot smaller than I am. There's your V sitting in there. Nice, nice and flat, nice and even around each side. Just perfect. Any questions thus far? Okay, so now what we're going to do is going to sew up the side seams. Okay, so we'll turn that into a side seam. And then we make the frill. All right, I reckon that actually would look fan diddly tastic. Here we go, that's because I'm facing you the other way, I can actually make it closer and smaller. That's going to look great with a pair of jeans, don't you think? I don't know if you guys have got this, a staple in my wardrobe is jeans. Okay, I'm going to now go and sew up the side seams. You don't need to see me for that, and I will be back to ruffle it up. Pretty ho, I have now got the side seams sewn together. Oh, here we go. All sewn together, ironed opened. Okay, open my seams up. I'm now going to take the um the ruffle off the pattern piece. I've got two ruffles here, one for each seam. First thing I'm gonna do is I am going to overlock each short end. I'll show you in a second what my short end is. Yep, I know, ruffling away. Most of my pattern pieces are usually that cloth, so you don't hear it. Right. Sometimes it's easier to use paper when you are doing a massive, massive rectangle. Okay, sleeve frill. Here's my two sleeve, sleeve thrill fr frills. I'm going to go and overlock them. And I'm going to hold them in one place because I know the outside is actually the outside. Funny thing is <laughs> the mandolins are going sideways. But I knew that was going to happen. I was literally using a piece of um, remnant that I um, acquired yesterday. And um, from the fabric warehouse, my mandolins. And, um, oh, oh, there you go. I wonder why that did that. Anyway, so I'm back at the overlocker about to do my thing okay so i've pinned it pinned it there so that i can hold them in the right place so i know which is which and then when i finish overlocking each inch now the reason that janine did this with the pattern piece was making the frill um twice as wide as it needed to be was due to the fact that um you don't always have the pattern look good 
you know both sides sometimes it's white and and um a lot of people don't like to have that showing through they like to have the same color so um and this is the part when i made the dress for the first time i wondered why the frill was so long in the sleeve and short at the bottom of the skirt and it's because i did not read the instructions kind of like i haven't done now but now i know how to make the outfit or that make the shirt so i am just got the other side to do again still seriously holding the two pieces in the place they are because it's a bit tricky to know which is which which side is which so i want to make sure i roll with all the same side being either the wrong side or the right side being the right side okay it made sense to me and um it will make sense to you what i meant so so far the outside okay so that's that's when it's together like that that is my outside so i know that they are actually the right sides that i chose to be the right sides on the main garment so i'm going to pin that now don't forget fabric is manipulative no it can take being manipulated you're in charge of the fabric the fabric is not in charge of you so you can make it pick it up the thing i always found the best and the easiest is not to lay something down to match up the seams laying it on the table and trying to do it i feel it hinders okay so that's those two together i'll un i need this one and this one together now i believe I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. Okay, and that goes there. <laughs> oh, someone's mowing their lawns. That will be me later today. It's one nineteen now. It might not be me later today. Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. Overthink, overthink. Stop overthinking it, Stacey. Right. And just pin that together. I'm going to take these pins out now because they are being a bit of a hindrance. But they did the job when they needed to do the job. So that one's there, and this one's here. Yeah, and it's not twisted. Look at me. Oof. I did all right. I did all right, mate. Okay, now I'm going to go to the sewing machine and sew them back up. Okay, I'll be back. You guys remember me saying about bobbins and doing gathering? I um, like to pick a. I like to change just the bobbin thread because the bobbin thread is the easiest one to pull when you are doing gathering stitch. Um, it's the loosest and easiest to slide through so i am changing my white thread to mellow yellow actually there's nothing mellow about this color yellow look at that right but it is so much easier for um you to see it know which one to pull versus even if you change both a lot of people say you change your threads both of them why change both of them it still confuses you um and this way you know which one to pull so i've divided my sleeve i folded my frill in half i've decided to i've divided my my um ruffle in two quarters oops i'm going to pick up the yellow thread and make it nice and long i'm going to change it now i never go all the way out to four i like to have it just a bit in just so that's that little bit tighter to pull which means it's harder to undo so when you get it to the right length okay so and you just sew right at the top just go for it now well, i do i know i do have pins in there because i should have put a stitch or something there to mark my quarters I'm going to do half, half and half. Okay, so I'm going to lift the foot, uh, the 
needle up, pull it out. That's one. And I've only done half of it. Okay. It's easier to, to manipulate half of it than it is a full one. If I was doing the ruffle down the bottom, which is like 60 centimeters long, I would um, do it quarter by quarter. Okay. So make sure your fabric's all lined up there. Get rid of any of your stray cottons because they are long, because you're gathering. Get over the other half point. Okay, and then you keep gathering. Oops, you weren't even looking at me. You weren't looking at me. stitched and made little pretty skirts for my sleeves okay so I'm gonna go and get my sleeves and pin them in and adjust the um, gathering accordingly okay so I've quartered I've quartered each one of these except for this one the pin fell out and I will um, oh, it looks a bit and I will quarter up my sleeve itself and then we will go from there that was attached there why is that not gathering so I need that one together more. That's better. I fell straight back out. Right, so here's my little mandolin. I really hope I'm using the right word. Ooh. And I will... No, I think I was having a go with the birds. Bird dog. It's bird dog. Okay, so I'm going to attach... There's two seams that divide the um, frill into ha in half. Okay, so I've got the right sides out of the um, blouse. And it doesn't really matter for the other one because both of them are right side out. And I'm finding a seam and I'm finding, so the under seam, the under seam of the blouse, of the sleeve blouse, has to have the seam of the frill because you don't want a seam sitting where is the seam right around the other side right <laughs> oh right okay it's seam seam so do that in the other side of the seam I have two dogs one is inside the house and one is outside the house. The one outside the house is chasing the birds. The one inside the house is kind of requesting to come in here, but, but. Again, I like to do the junction. It's a bit harder with the junction with this because the internal seam, okay. Do it as neat as you can. Seam, seam, seam. Okay, and then your other seam at the, on your shoulder. Okay, so this seam should be the other opposite side. So that just goes up. And then you, you put the gathering. <laughs> The gathering. Hang on a sec. I just let the little little rodent in. Go on then. What are you two talking? Do you want to go out, or do you want to come in? Here you go. Are you both in here? Goodness. Do you want to play together? Are you inside or outside? Outside. There you go. The door's open now. 
the mowing of the lawns of the neighbours. Okay, so then what I normally do is I shimmy, I shimmy it, the um, gathering, to um, to shimmer and fit the sleeve, and then I pin it. And then I shimmer, just make sure it's all nice and gathered. I'm scratching my face. Oh, that breeze is still a bit chilly, really. overlocked it together I pulled out the um I pulled out the um here it is all on here on my jumper <laughs> the uh gathering stitch and now I'm going to just hem it so it's going to be a narrow hem since I've already overlocked it once that's a, like a little guide I'm just going to roll it once roll it twice and so as I go okay so roll once roll twice if you got the foot go for it now I'll do it with a nicer, bigger, a little bit, bit bigger stitch, so maybe three and a half. Give it that little top stitch effect. I didn't back tack because I'll go over it when I come back. But notice again I started on a seam. And I'll go around and do this. Okay, so I'm just tucking under as I go. Making a nice little roll hem. shirt the fern, fern bird shirt and it is all complete I've hemmed it it's got the frills around it it's got a neckline I'm going to put it on and show you what it looks like with my khakis um right these are virtual eyes still here talk amongst yourselves just kidding a little bit unrested. Right. Almost, almost right. Hi. I'm back. Right. Stay there and let me show you oh, how the thing comes up. Oops, that's really didn't even say my label on that's a bit bad right i'm going to change the angle there you go that's my belt sorry i'll tuck that into there Mum, tuck that up if i wanted to there you go I quite like it. What do you guys think? Hot off the press. Yes. 
Okay, right, back up here. Now, so that is me. I have made that. I should go outside because it is sunny. I don't want to miss summer. I think today's summer. But I've made that. Um, any questions on anything that you didn't quite understand, please let me know. I just I just love the fern bird, how the, um, the neckline always sits. I'm crooked. Sits perfectly. It's just... It's... They're not placed too badly, are they? No. Okay. I watched I watched something the other day. The Gilmore Girls. I'm right on the Gilmore Girls. And um, the mother, uh, not Lorelai, the um, Emily, the mother mother, um, she had a dress on and it was lace and it had two, two dark spots right where the nipple would be, like as part of the lace. And I'm like going, think people, placement is everything. Placement is key. So anyway, okay, so that is my my um, new firm bird top. So I can probably have something else to wear. Like that actually goes nicely with what I'm wearing, doesn't it? I think it does. Tell me what you think. Tell me if you've got any questions. Let me know um, if you didn't understand anything. Um, I didn't. I did, but I didn't go by the book. Um which I went by the book anyway because I know what I, I was, I've made it before. Um, I love it. I'm actually really happy. This this fabric cost me, um, oh, I think it was like $2. So I already had the pattern, so I've got a $2 top. That took me a couple of three hours to make, and it took me that long because I was recording. Okay, I'm stoked. Tell me how you feel. Okay, I'm going to edit this all up possibly go mow some lawns um definitely weed one or weed down there but i want you guys to stay safe warm dry okay keep happy please be happy be happy i want you to stay cool and keep on sewing if in doubt shout out okay see you guys thanks for watching